This is a demonstration of a sample data collection application built with Alpha Anywhere. It's for doing a daily inspection of a concrete or cement mixing truck. Uh, this is what the application looks like running in live preview. And uh, let's switch over to showing you, here it is in a web browser. And here is um, the, um, uh, what a cement mixing truck looks like. It has a cab, it has a drum, which is where the, the cement or concrete sits and rotates around and there's water that comes out of this, the water tank uh, to keep it wet and there's a gauge on the side of that and there are brakes and a chute. So this is something that has to be inspected. And um, this is what the application looks like. And uh, let's show you um, sort of how it runs to show you the different parts. And in, in, in another video, I'll show you how it was constructed because this is a sample app which is uh, commented and shows you how to build a pretty complete application for doing uh, data acquisition uh, with the ability to be offline. So um, you can log in here by typing in the name of uh, the name and password, which will uh, actually query a database. And uh, in this case, uh, the database uh, is an access database with uh, a person and truck make and, and all sorts of capacity and does it house the horn work or not, etc. cetera. So this gives you an example of that. And you can type in um, a name such as J. Doe um, at uh, alpha.com and a password. Uh, and we can do a login and it actually goes to the server and checks the password. In this case, picks up all of these records that it found uh, for J. Doe. And um, if you uh, want to, you can see that these were synced. And at this point I could be offline because they've all been downloaded. I can look here and I can see that they're identifying values. Um, and there's the truck ID, um, the date when this inspection was done and who the name was, the login ID. Uh, there's the specifications, uh, the make, the weight, and you know, and stuff. Uh, and if I uh, tap on one of these, then I can edit this if I feel like it and go through it and um, set different values. Um, this is actually a little small, but this is on an iPhone 4. Um, but it's designed more for iPhone 5s, etc. cetera. Um, and if let's say I uh, uh, modified one of these, uh, here's a checklist, you know, the maintenance log, uh, let's make that pass and go back up. Now I can synchronize and this will sync it back. Um, and up, oh, I've waited too long. I had a user timeout, so it wants me to um, uh, confirm the password. And it's uh, reconfirming the password. And now the um, it's been complete. And if we go back up to this form, we'll sync that, see that it is synced. Um, and let me um, go back up and log out. I'm gonna log out, we'll erase all unsynced data. It warns you about that. In this case, I can do login help and I can see uh, help that could be provided. Um, there's an event log button that might be needed by support personnel. Now, this is also helpful for debugging. I put a lot of things into here to help with um, building the app and testing it so that here you can look at various events. And throughout the application, there's a call to a logging, um, a log call, and whatever it is, like this list data synchronization complete, one record was submitted, callback complete, um, Here's um, restored from local storage, logging out. It has a log and you can clear the log if you want. Um, and there's also a demo login. Now this actually supports three different types of login. Um, if you're running it in live preview or working preview, uh, it uses a, a simple one that uh, in this case, you just type in the username and the password is the same as the username. 
uh, for easy testing. If you're working off of a server, a regular server, um, then uh, it actually uses the, uh, the standard built-in login that's available um, and security that's available from, uh, from Alpha, or you can use the demo login. Now, the one reason for providing these three is for testing, to make it easy to test, to make it easy to demo, and also to give sample code to show you how to do custom types of uh, login if you want. So in the demo login, it just pretends it goes into a little, uh, a little timer loop, and then um, it uh, automatically loads the same uh, two, uh, two values. Um, and you can go and you can edit them if you want. Um, you see that you can go to account, you can go back up to the list of the forms. You may want to build this so that it uh, um, doesn't just get all of the ones in the database uh, for the user, but maybe only the ones that haven't been approved or something like that, or in the last few days. That's up to you and your query. Um, you can press sync becomes active if something has been edited. Um, the new button um, lets you... Um, scan in a, um, a value or type in a value. You can, here's a help of what you want. The default just says new location uh, because it's like this was for a, um, the default app this came from was for doing um, uh, inspection. So the location of the inspection, but in this case, you really want a truck ID. So we call it truck ID. Um, and enter the truck ID or on the keyboard or by scanning, I can hit more. Um, this may be entered on the keyboard or scan. The truck ID is usually displayed on the side of the truck as well as on the sticker, on the windshield, QR code, and maybe scanned here, which will make it a lot faster. Um, so let me show you something here. This, uh, here we see mirrored um, my iPhone and uh, the same thing, and I'm going to push new uh, here by tapping it. And now I'm going to click on that scan button over there and um, take a piece of paper with a barcode on it. And there we'll get one. And scan complete. The following values were set. Uh, and it, it set the truck ID to what it found, and then it looked it up in a table and came up with all these values, so you don't have to type them in. These all would have been on the spec sheet inside the, uh, the cab. And you hit OK. And then we can just hit Save. And now we have uh, a new form, uh, all set with the date, etc. cetera. Um, now, if, um, if we did this, it says not, not running in phone gap, using a simulated value. So it's not. Um, so this lets you try it even though you don't have it, and it's pretending as if I scanned, and comes up in this case that same, the same scan. I actually had a few different ones that I worked for, and I chose the same one here. Uh, so this is what you would have gotten, and save, and there it's all set. And it's filled in that identifier, and the login that I did, and the, um, the date of inspection. Um, and I can look at the specs, and it's filled in. It's filled in those, um, and in this case, uh, let's change that to Peterbilt, and uh, we'll go back and look at the checklist, and notice it has all sorts of just-in-time help information. We'll pass here and go to next, and pass this one and go to next. Uh, we'll fail this one and go to the next. Uh, etc. So um, this you can just go through. It's in different sections. But down here in the drum, uh, let's say the drum counter looks okay. But what about the drum speed? You got to check that the drum speed corresponds to the setting. It says here, um, you do this timing test. First, you set the drum speed control to 10 RPM. This is inside the cab. Uh, but then you stand where you can see the drum clearly, find a mark on the drum in a place that passes it on the truck body. And then when it, the mark passes that place, hit start test. And when it passes it again, push stop test. What this does is automatically time it and turn it into RPM. 
And um, so let's close the help there. And let's show you that. Uh, so that's, you're looking for something like a mark here and watching it come by and then timing how long. It's a pretty simple type of test to be able to do. So um, let's do it. And it's going around. Da, 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 da. Nice big button so you can't help but miss it, uh, but hit it. And up, oh, it was 80% of the target. Well, actually, I wasn't paying careful attention. Let's pay a little more careful attention. So uh, start the timer. And do, da, 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 da. and see, we're going to make it. Here we go. It's 110% of target. That is acceptable. That's a pass. So this shows you how you could use a um, uh, creating your own custom control that um, takes advantage of uh, the computer being able to do something for you. Uh, notice it's next and previous. And when I get to the very end of all of the questions, um, I'm left with done, uh, which will bring me back up, leave, leaving me at the last one. This, um, wherever I happen to be, it automatically scrolls you to the right place. Um, so now if we go off and sync, uh, this one needs sync. Well, I'm in a demo mode. So in demo mode, I can do a demo sync and it will, I can uh, do the, it'll do the, the changes that I want. And, but I can also force an error. Let's force a value error. Found two errors. If I go back up to the form, I see here that it says two errors. Well, um, I can look down here and I see here's an error here. It's a validation error. Trucks made by Peterbilt are not supported. This is just, it's a, you'll see in the code that just has a, um, a way to always force an error. And if I go to uh, the checklist here, there's a validation error over here where it just says that the, ma uh, the manual must not be present. Whatever you do, it asks you, says the opposite. But actually, um, it's hard to find all these. So there's a list here that says two errors. And this lets me actually go just through the errors and find them to be able to fix them. And it tells you what the error is, et cetera. So this is a validation. Uh, these are errors that are um, where you had uh, data um, a value error, but I can also force a conflict error. This is like a right conflict. In this case, it says that um, if we look at the errors, there was a right conflict um, that they had, somebody else had modified it, and now the database says Volvo, and I wanted to make it Peterbilt. Um, well, I can say always use theirs, always use mine, or use theirs, or use mine, and then next time I sync, that's what I'll get. So you can actually, this actually handles those errors um, and allows you to be able to, um, uh, to then uh, do your testing to see how well you're handling errors. Uh, you can delete. Um, this will mark uh, that record for delete. Um, this form anew has not been synced. It will be deleted immediately when you confirm. Uh, let's not delete that one. Uh, but if, let's say, I go to this one here and I try to delete it, this form will be deleted at the next sync. And you can confirm delete, and you'll see here that it says that it will be deleted. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty complete application. Um, it covers a lot of the different pieces. Um, if I um, go out and come back in, And uh, we see that it remembers where I was. It has me still logged in. Uh, now, it, as you remember, uh, there's a timeout enforced uh, by the server. In this case, it's set to a very short timeout to make it easier to test. But uh, if you start, if you've waited a long time, you're going to be, you can do your editing here, but you can't, um, you can't upload it without confirming, reconfirming that you're the person that you say that you were. So, um, and uh, over here, the event log is also available um, over here um, from the account settings, where it also lets you log out. And this is a place where you can add other settings that you might want to have uh, to let the user be able to, to see things uh, or provide other information for them or other things that uh, uh, other commands that you might want. So um, that's the application. And... Um, 
It's the uh, mobile form cement truck application, and um, as uh, we'll show in um, in other videos, um, it's um, it's fully commented, um, and uh, so you can learn from it and see a working program and figure out how to be able to um, uh, modify it for your own use. It is designed for a uh, a single level. Um, simple file, uh, flat file, uh, which is a common way of doing things, um, and uh, makes use of the, um, the, uh, the form view uh, in uh, Alpha Anywhere, um, and um, uh, editors, so there's a form view, and there are editors, and this is the uh, the new uh, tablet-centric forms and touch-centric forms capabilities of Alpha. So um, uh, thank you very much. It doesn't have to be for cement trucks. You could build this for doing all sorts of types of inspection and other data capture. Thank you.